All right. Um, good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us and hanging out with us um, here. I know that seven o'clock at night is when you love to receive professional development, but um, we definitely wanted to, to target at some times when we knew that would be uh, educators uh, and everybody's schedule is different. So uh, my name is Corey McNeil. I am the educational program consultant here at the Department of Public Instruction, and I oversee Canvas and Go Open NC. Um, so we are just doing these as a webinar series for you all to have questions and, and comments. So this is supposed to be interactive in our time together tonight. So please feel free to utilize those features. You should have a toolbar across the bottom. Cameras on, off, your choice. I do ask that you stay muted unless you're actively speaking in the conversation. Um, with me tonight is uh, Lorianne Strickler, who is a awesome um, coach and trainer with instructor, and she's actually going to be leading us through the training, and I'm going to be moderating the chat and having that conversation. So I'm going to turn it over to you, and you can take it from there. Great. Thank you. Thank you so much. You guys can hear me okay, right? Perfect. Okay. Hi, everyone. As Corey said, my name is Lorian Stickler. I am a learning consultant with Canvas. And I also support um, during the day, I support a district here in Broward County in Florida. So I'm super excited to share my knowledge and experience with you, you know, working at the district under um, working with, you know, 15,000 plus teachers across the uh, school district. I, I feel like uh, I've been where you are and I'm going to tell you there's hope and I'm super happy that you're here and I really feel that um, my purpose today is to give you some pointers in regard to course design. And then I really want to make it interactive. I want to, I want you to ask questions and be able to answer your needs um, throughout this next hour. So I thank you for your opportunity. Let me go ahead and share my screen. And make sure that I've got everything going correctly. Can you guys see my, uh, my PowerPoint for Canvas course? Design? Are we good? Excellent. Okay. So. As Corey said, I am here. Let's see. I'm sorry. I got the wrong thing going. Okay. Let's try that 1 more time. As Corey said, I'm here tonight to talk about course design considerations as you are building your canvas courses. Now, some of you may be receiving canvas courses already built for you. Sometimes that happens, right? And you don't have to really think about the way that it's put together, but. I know that as I started to use Canvas, that's how I originally started was, you know, already built modules. And then very quickly, I decided as a teacher, hey, listen, I, I want to build my own. I want to start thinking about, um, you know, bringing my own learning experiences. And that's really the purpose of this presentation, right, is to help you understand that as we're building um, our own courses and our modules within Canvas, there are certain design considerations that we like to um, follow just to make things easy for our students and our fellow teachers and our parents, you know, whoever your, your audience may be, and maybe you're a professional development um, provider and maybe your, your students are your teachers. All of these course design considerations will go very well with whatever job you're using or doing in Canvas. So tonight on our agenda, we're going to talk about design considerations. We're going to talk about some design standards, and then we're going to go through what it looks like to set up your course, right? If I'm creating a home page, what are some of the things that I want to include on my home page? We're going to talk about module design. What kind of things can be put into a Canvas module? We're going to make sure that, as always, we talk about accessibility. You know, are my students using um, laptops or are a lot of my students on mobile devices? And there are certain accessibility standards that we like to um, plan for to make the, um, the course as accessible and as easy for students to navigate as possible. And also we're gonna talk about best practices for course settings. So as we go through, the first thing I'd like to think about are some course design considerations. So what are course design considerations? What is course design, right? So course design is really the process of creating quality learning environments and experiences for students. Course design is deliberate, it's structured, and it includes interaction, student to teacher interaction and student to student interaction. Now, as you're starting to do this, a lot of teachers in the very beginning will fall into a small little pitfall of let me make sure that it looks really cute. Let me make sure I have my Bitmoji homepage or I have really pretty pictures. And, 
you know, thinking about thinking about your your own classroom as you walk into a physical classroom, right? Remember, remember back when we were beginning teachers. You know, it, I wanted my room to be perfect, right? I wanted it to be cute, and 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 it is important to have a really um, welcoming environment, right? But we also want to make sure that we're attending to the structure of our courses, and we want to make sure that it's easy to navigate. We want to make sure, just like our our physical learning environment, our physical classroom, we want to make sure that our students know where to go when they're looking for, you know, something in the classroom, or maybe there's, you know, a small group or maybe a, a center or something like that. It's important for for our students to know how to get somewhere within our classroom. Well, the same thing really applies in your virtual setting as well. So that's really what we're going to focus on in the beginning today. So within Canvas, you know, as we've um, been working with districts and, and, and states and building these things, we've really come up with like 10 essential items or foundations for creating a course, right? So we have the homepage, obviously, navigation, key learning information. I'm not going to read all of these things to you, but looking at those, if you're a, a brand new course designer or maybe within the first semester or so of using Canvas, that might feel a little daunting. Like, you know, someone new to the Canvas platform, you know, maybe maybe creating and organizing learning experiences within Canvas, they're like, well, you know, I, I'm not really sure where to start, Lori, and it, it, it's a little bit, it's a little bit overwhelming. So I'm going to ask you to go on a little detour with me for a second, because I'm going to bring it back to something that we have in our everyday life. I'm going to suggest the importance of establishing course design standards within your institution, your school, or even a grade level. If we have standards within our Canvas instance, whatever grade I'm teaching or as a student, whichever grade or subject that I'm in, I basically know how to, how to go anywhere within my Canvas course because my school has developed these standards or my district has developed these standards, something that, that makes it easy for me Let's say as a, a middle school student, right? I may have six preps or six six periods throughout the day. When I go into my science class, if my teacher is follows, following these course design standards, then he or she is going to make it easy for me to know where my assignments are located. How do I get to modules, right? When I go to my language arts course, if my teacher in language arts is using the same standards that my science or my social studies teacher is, it's going to take away that frustration for me as a student, I'm always going to know where to go to do the things that I need to do within the course, right? So thinking about these standards, I want to relate it for just a moment to building a house. If you came on within the first few minutes that I came on here, I currently were working to build a house right now. So I'm thinking a lot about the structure of a home, right? And I was thinking about, well, a Canvas course has certain standards to ease the um, navigation for students, it's kind of like building a house, right? So as we're working with the builder to build the house, we're thinking about what are the standards for my home? So take a look at these pictures here on the bottom, right? So we have the beautiful mountain cabin. We have the, the quaint little probably one story home. We have the tiny home, which I am very fascinated with. And then we have the, the high rise building. All of these are houses, right? Regardless of size, regardless of paint color, regardless of location, houses all basically have the same things. They have doors, they have garages, they have living rooms, they have bathrooms, they have bedrooms. You know, for the most part, you can you can look at a building and say that's a house because it meets certain standards. So just like homes are built to standards. I want to relate your course design to certain standards, and I'm going to offer that on the next um, the next slide here. So there are certain recommendations that that I use when I'm working with um, teachers and in, in developing professional development. There are certain standards that I use and say these are the recommendations for for course design. So let me click on this for just a second. Hopefully it comes up properly. Capcuna, let me pull it over for you. Sorry, I went to the wrong window. Let's see. 
is sticky for me. There we go. Okay, so let's think about these standards, right? So in the beginning, we talked about course navigation. We talked about home page. We talked about um, building through modules. So my suggestion is just best practices of working with Canvas over the years is to think about my course and how it relates to the front of my house, right? If I were inviting you over to a party, I would give you the address, right? And as you're driving over to my home, you would be looking for the house number. You'd be looking for the street number, right? So let's think about your course homepage for a second. That's the first place that the student lands when they click on your little um, tile, right? So just like coming over to my house for a party, I want to present my best self to you through my course. So imagine you're coming to my house for a party and imagine that you arrive at my house and, and I have all of the kids' bikes in the front yard. You have to step over all the bikes and the toys and you have to kind of go around the bushes and the grass is really high. And my, my address on my home, I, it's really small or maybe it's painted the same color as the door. How would you feel walking in? Would you, would you feel confident that you're in the right spot? Or would you be like, oh, I hope this is the right spot. Should we knock on the door, right? So when you're building your course homepage, I want you to consider it's your, your front door, your course, right? I want you to think about how you design your course homepage and how that presents your best self to your students. Because I can tell you, if I was having a party at my house, I certainly would make sure the lawn was mowed and I would make sure the bikes are picked up and I would make sure that it looks nice and inviting as you come in. So a course homepage should be inviting, right? It should have lots of visual or visuals or a few visuals. It's the first impression that your students have when they visit your course. So just think about that as we talk about this tonight. As you go into your course and you're and you're looking at the homepage, well, what makes it inviting? Just like you have your address on your home so people can arrive at the right spot or your mail will arrive, you also would have the title of your course, right? If I'm teaching language arts, I'm going to have sixth grade language arts. I'm going to have my name there. Maybe there's a welcome message, right? Something that the students would see first time that would contain my information. Now, I want to make sure that I have some multimedia elements. I've seen teachers create videos. Hey, welcome to my class. I'm so excited to have you this year. Here's the things we're going to study. Maybe there's um, just a picture of myself or maybe a picture of something that we're going to be learning. Something to entice the person. As they, as they come into your course. And then of course, contact information, right? My contact information is indeed my address, just like I would have on my house. I wanna make sure that whoever is in my course knows how to contact me if I'm not in a live session, just as now a live virtual session or even face-to-face, -face, right? I wanna have information on um, how to be contacted. So that, that's really a good homepage, in my opinion, homepage consideration. The next thing, I want you to think about something that we all fall into these pitfalls because we as teachers, we want to be able to give you as much information as possible, right? So I'm going to take everything that I need to teach you and I'm going to put it on the page. I don't know about you, but when I look at a web page, I scan it. I don't read every bit of information, right? So as you're building your pages, home page, pages within your course, think about the fact that most of us, especially our digital natives, they, they don't read the entire page, they scan them, right? They're looking for information. So you wanna keep your sentences short and to the point. You wanna use words that are simple, um, short phrases. You wanna make sure that your headlines or your course title or something important stands out at the top, right? And you can do that through color. You can do that through size of print. You wanna make sure that you have a lot of white space on there because it's overwhelming sometimes when we come to a web page and it's just filled with information. Um, you know, when I go to like, a, when I Google something and, and I end up on a wiki page, that, that's not a professional page, have you ever done that? And you just, you're just like an overload of information. That's not something that we wanna do for our students, right? We wanna make it easy for them to, to be able to scan the page and get the gist of the information and then read for detail later on to find out as they're completing assignments. And then we wanna make sure that we use um, images as well, right? Uh, picture is worth a thousand words. I know as a visual learner personally, I like to have images to support what I'm learning. 
And then bullet points are obviously um, super helpful because it keeps things organized. The next thing I want you to consider as we're going through our course navigation is um, that the navigation of the course. I said it, right? In our Canvas course, we are able to, over on the side here as a teacher, we are able to determine or, or lock down what, this, what we don't want our students to see. So right now you can see that I don't have any announcements. You can see that little, that little um, arrow or the eye with the slash through it means it's not visible to students right now because I don't have any announcements. Um, assignments are not visible. What we like to do um, in the district that I work with, what I like to suggest is we have, we have a home page link in our Canvas course that's visible to students always. We like to use the syllabus page. You can or cannot use it. You know, it's up to you. We can talk about that later. Um, we like to have announcements that are available. We like to have modules that are available. And then course progress or grades. We like to lock down certain things so that the student A doesn't get lost. B doesn't spend their time clicking around. Um, to me, it's just a, it's just an easy way to make sure that the students stay on task. And then I've also found most importantly, people. I like to hide people because I don't want my students going in to see what other students are in the course, right? So that's that's something that we recommend. And we're going to talk about that when I get into Canvas and go through it as a live, as a live section. So by customizing your course navigation, you as the teacher are maintaining a bit of control about what you want students to see or not see. And I think that's an important thing to think about as you're building your course. And then lastly, my suggestion, our suggestion is to build in modules. Modules give you the ability to use the next button. It gives you the ability to chunk information. It gives you the ability to determine what is seen and what is not seen. You can build in modules, have modules available to your students. And then you can be building assignments behind them and they can't even see it until you're ready for them to see it because you put it into a module. What we like to do is we like to make sure that we always help our students to know that anytime you need to navigate this course, you always go to modules. And that's a way for you to determine what is locked behind a closed door virtually without you know, having students have access to something before you want them to have access to it. As you're building a course, just kind of look at the screenshot here, right? So you can see here that I have two different modules. I have the module title here with activities, the second module title with activities. And if you look right here, I have a module that has a string of activities. Sometimes, for me personally, if I'm coming into a task and I'm handed a long list of 12 things that I need to do, that will turn me off. Like, oh, that's just, just too overwhelming, I can't do it, right? So what we like to do is we like to make sure that when we are building our modules, we're chunking it out again so that it's easy. Thinking about back to, I think it was the first or second page we had here where we talked about the white space, right? We talked about the fact that we need to give students the ability to see something and it not be too cluttered so that it's not overwhelming. So those are my suggestions in regard to um, Canvas course recommendations. As we move through the PowerPoint, we're going to get into kind of the details of how is this done, right? So something that you'll be coming away with today is a course evaluation checklist. And I'm going to open this up in a second. And I want you to really just take a second to look at it. I'll also put the link in the chat so that you'll be able to download it and have it on your computer. So as you're creating your courses, we can offer you the opportunity to make a copy. I actually have it in my course. Let me go to my module. We can offer you the opportunity to consider the course evaluation checklist. So the course evaluation checklist is something that Canvas developed to help your beginning course designer meet certain standards, your intermediate course designer start to flex their knowledge and experience a little bit and, and move into higher level sort of thinking as far as building, 
And then also your experience designer. Have some standards that are helpful to uh, measure your course against, right? So let me grab, um, grab this link quickly. I have my course public, so you should not have any trouble seeing it. Just a second, my apologies. It's the chat somewhere. The one thing I'll say while Lorianne's putting that Thanks, in the chat man. is that I I do love the way that this rubric is is scaffold. So as you're looking at this, once we have it pulled up here, there are things that are one star, two star, and three star. And so, it, just like you would as you learn more about the 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 platform, you can d dive into those two stars and three star things. Or if you're brand new to Canvas, you can focus on the one star things. I really think that's a nice way to look at it and say, you know, hey. I just need to learn the basics, right? I need, I need to know what exactly what I need to know in the moment to make sure that my classes and my students are successful. The next semester it's, you know, Hey, let's, I want to learn more about, you know, um, how to use groupings or how to use mastery pass or how to use, um, a different type of homepage. Those are all things that you can learn more about. Um, and for many of them that are that 2 starter, 3 star things, they have links readily within that document to kind of walk you through that process and learn more about those items. Lori, I have lost the chat entirely. I can't find it. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to pop oh. to my email really quickly. I'm going to send this to you. And then if you don't mind popping it in the chat, I, I apologize. No problem. I know that's always fun when you're sharing your screen. It's like, I've lost all the buttons. I don't know what buttons. I did. Yes, I lost them all. My apologies, you guys. Give me just a second. Thanks for your patience. Here, I'll let you look at yourself for just a moment because, you know, that's always fun. <laughs> okay, Corey, I found you. And I'm going to pop this in the chat for you or in the email. So you should be getting that momentarily. So as Corey um, pops that into the chat for you, let me go back for just a second and go back to my PowerPoint. Let me... Slideshow for just a moment. When you're on this page, what you can do is, is there's a little download button here. If you click this little download button, it'll give you access. You can see that it's downloading as a PDF right here, right? So um, that way is a way that you can download it and have it. You can save it to your computer. I'll also send it in a follow-up email if for some weird reason it doesn't come through. And I apologize if it doesn't. Um, we're still going to go through it, take a look at the course evaluation checklist. This is something that that I use all the time with courses that I'm starting now, as well as courses that I may have created two or three years ago, and I'm coming back to try and refine and improve what I'm doing. So, um, as Corey said, the course evaluation checklist is a great way to help you to establish some standards. And if you notice that we have one star items are essential items, we believe that's something that's super important. You always want to include the two star items are best practices and the three star items are exemplary. So, taking a moment just to look at this, um, this course evaluation checklist, if you could just take a second, and I'm going to be quiet, to, I want you to look at the foundational items and tell me what you see. I would love for you to unmute yourself and, and share, you know, any ideas that you see or give me some feedback as far as um, something that you see as a foundational item that you think is, is super important. Maybe it's something that you use already. And you can see the foundational items are um, highlighted in blue to help you out. We're just going to look at foundational today. I think that making sure all of your links are working is super duper important. And how many times do our links suddenly stop working, right? Like that's, that's super important. Yeah. Thank you for that. For sure. Frustrating for you, frustrating for the student. Anyone else? Let's focus for just a second. As you're thinking, I want you to focus on the home page because that's something that we're going to start with today. I'm going to model the rich content editor for you, and that's available on 
pages that's available on discussions, it's available in assignments and quizzes. And I want you to become familiar with that because that you will find that all over your Canvas course. And um, we're going to go through that and I'm going to model it with the home page in just a moment. Anybody that maybe is an experienced course designer, would you like to share on any of the best practice or exemplary? I'd love to have at least two more ideas because I learn from you as you know, just as you learn from me. So any feedback you can give would be gratefully appreciated. Does anyone, oh, go ahead, yes. Oh, I was just gonna say, I'm new to Canvas mm -hmm. and you're already, I'm already overloaded with information. Okay, so what so, you're gonna do is take a breath. Okay. Right, because we've been there, I was there, I remember. So take a breath for a second and tell me something that you deem important when you are a student in an online course. What's something that, that you think is important for you as a student to know? Well, uh, my biggest thing is understanding um, how to navigate through everything. Brilliant. That is my number one consideration. Yes, I love that. That goes back to the standards, right? Because I, I don't want to come into a course and not know how to get to where I need to get to. And I have four things to do and how do I find them? And, and you know, the next thing you know, I'm frustrated. I'm in tears. We all know what that feels like. I love that you recognize that as a student. So your students are feeling the same way, right? So we're going to talk about that in course navigation. Thank you so much for sharing. Thank anybody, you. Anybody else? Frustrated, not frustrated? I'm taking them all. To make sure that the due dates are posted to where the students can find them. Yes. I know with me, I've been at ASU and I'm doing student teaching and stuff right now. And there have been times that I haven't been able to find the due dates. And then I'm like, okay, so I missed that due date because it wasn't posted and it was like hidden somewhere. Wonderful. So incredibly frustrating. Yes, due dates are super important. I need you to remind me of that when I go through the course, okay? I want to show you guys how to do that. You know, it's funny today I was working on a district wide course where teachers had to submit 5 items and then the last thing was um, a quiz where they basically said, yes, I did it. So I'm going in and I'm grading these things today and I'm realizing when we set this up. We didn't set it up so that it was you have to do 1, 2, 3, 4, then your final acknowledgement people were acknowledging without completing items and I was like, oh, no. So, and I've been doing this a long time, you all, right? Like this happens. So if you find yourself in a situation like that, you reach out to a colleague, you go to the Canvas help documents and, and you just take a moment and you figure it out. We had three people working on it this afternoon. Within 20 minutes, we figured it out. Everything is fine. I'll go in tomorrow and I'll continue grading, right? So, so this happens. It, it's definitely a learning experience. And as we continue to use Canvas for different things, we're going to find that Maybe we didn't set up everything perfectly, but I, I guarantee next time. Oh, I'm going to make sure I'm doing it in a sequential fashion. Right? So, um, it happens. It's just about being as, as easy as you can with yourself and making sure that. You just, you just do the best that you can. All right, so let's talk a little bit about, let me get back to my PowerPoint for a moment here. All right, so course design, we talked about standards. We talked about the, um, I'm just gonna have to share it again. We've talked about the importance of making sure that we have, you know, design considerations. We've talked about what course design is. We talked about, you know, the 10 essential elements, right? For quality course design, you know, as the, the feedback was, it's really important to know how to navigate. That's number one. Um, it's important to know due dates, all of those things, all of these things you're going to learn as you continue working in Canvas. And um, it, it's going to be something that eventually will be second nature to you. It's just a matter of making sure that you're easy with yourself and you are not, not, 
not being too hard when you make a mistake. You just reach out to someone who maybe 10 days more experience than you have and you figure it out together. That's exactly what we do. Um, also within the course evaluation checklist, I'm going to share this afterwards. We have a mobile design checklist, right? So I want you to think about your audience. What are your students using? Are your students using laptops? Or are they using uh, maybe tablets, maybe phones, right? So as I'm designing, I want to make sure that I design for the mobile user in mind. And on this mobile design checklist, we're not going to get into it this evening. I'm going to send this as a copy later. There are considerations for mobile design. You know, how how large do I make my image? Um, what is my what are some of the navigations that I that I'm going to work on? Basically, if you if you lock down your course evaluation checklist, your essentials, that's going to help with the mobile design as well. But there are some um, features to think about. So, all right. So we talked about the mobile design checklist. Let's talk about setting up our course. Let's get into the meat of using Canvas. And this is where I want the questions and answers and and problems and and we'll, we'll work it out together. So, first thing I want to talk about is the rich content editor. We like to call it the RCE. It's called the new RCE here because it recently changed, but you guys are probably just knowing it as the new and improved, right? So what is the RCE? The RCE is a rich content editor. You will find it at the top of home pages. You will find it at the top of assignments, of discussions, of quizzes. Anything else I'm missing? Pages. You'll find it, it, it really acts, I like to liken it to like a, a Word document, right? So if you look at the top here, you'll see that we have, um, you know, certain things like you, you see the paragraph, the font type, the type of font, the color, right? You have this little section over here, section number four. This is where some of our multimedia features are. You know, if I look back at um, section number one, I guess I should have done it in order. If I look at section number one, that's the menu bar. That's where you can use the menu options to format your page content, right? So in section number two, you have the section number two, you have the toolbar. You can format text here. Section number three is where you would insert links and images and media. And section number four, excuse me, links and images and media and document. Um, section number five, that's that's an LTI. We're not going to get into that today, but if you have um, if you happen to use Nearpod, for example, Nearpod is a platform that works really well with Canvas. And what you can do is you can use the LTI to bring in your Nearpod um, activity. And instead of having your students go out to Nearpod and put the code in, you can just embed it into your Canvas course. And that will allow your students to sign into their Canvas course, click on your card, click on your homepage, go to modules. They can start working on the Nearpod, whether you are leading the Nearpod or you're having them do it on their own. And then the cool thing that happens, this is amazing. The cool thing that happens is the report that comes in from Nearpod actually comes into your Canvas assignment. And you as the teacher are able to go in and see every little interaction that the student did. And that's called an LTI. It's a learning tool interoperability. We have a lot of platforms out there, especially instructional materials that have LTIs that work with Canvas. And then we go into just the special formatting, like you would have on a Word document, you know, like the bullets and do I, you know, put it on the left hand side justified in the middle? Do I put some tabs in there? And then we have some other math activities that um, I'm not even going to pretend to get into tonight. And then also you could put a table, that kind of thing. So let's let's dive into the RCE for just a second. Let me go to my home page. Is there somewhere I can go? I saw something in the chat about Nearpod. Corey, is it something I need to answer or is it for you? I'm gonna see if I can find a resource, but um, I am not an expert on that, Sarah, um, but I will see if I can find you some resources about how to use that LTI. I, I actually have something I can share with you afterward, Corey. I have a page that I would be more than glad to share because we use Nearpod in the district that I work with. So um, I'll share that with you. Thank you. All right, my friends. Let's think about the course design features that we have. Let's think about what we know about our homepage. Think about your coming to my party. What are the kinds of things you need to see to make sure you're in the right spot? Here's my homepage. 
I put some information on there to make it at least ready. I know, first of all, I don't know if you're having trouble seeing that. Anybody have trouble seeing that right now? It's really small, right? So first thing that I like to do, I like to always start with 14 point type font. 14 to me is a good place to start because it's, it's a little easier to see, okay? So this is my homepage. You are invited to my course. What do you see thinking about making it an inviting? We talked about that. Thinking about having it a place that someone's gonna want to be excited about being. What do you see that maybe I need to change? It's quality course design. This course is designed to help you identify the importance of course design standards and useful resources to support you as you create quality learning experiences for your students. Florian Stickler, Canvas Learning Associate, please reach out to me directly if you have any questions with my email address. I have everything there, right? Florian, I would add a photo. Oh, I love it. Let me go to the edit. I think a photo would really help. So maybe, I come here. So here's my RCE. Let me, you know what? I just did something. Let me make sure that I tell you what I did. Forgot about that. I apologize. So I'm going to, I'm in my course, right? I'm on my homepage. I'm going to click the edit button. And when I come into the edit, what do you see? But the RCE, the rich content editor. So what I'm hearing is I need to add an image because that will help a little bit with the excitement. Now, I think I want to put my image here. I think I want to put my image in the middle. Go to the middle. You can see my cursors there, right? That, that's pretty normal. Here's some, here's an integration that I absolutely love because I want to always be careful that I make sure I don't go to Google and grab an image that belongs to someone. And now I'm not honoring copyright. Canvas has this wonderful integration in course images, whoops, hang on, sorry. Oh, help me out here, Canva, what's going on? Sir? Ah, thank you, I got lost for a second, my apologies. So I'm gonna go to, put my cursor here, I'm gonna go to insert, to go to image, and I'm going to upload an image. now. I could have an image that I took with my camera or my phone on my computer, but right now I'm going to go to Unsplash. Unsplash is a really great copyright free um, image search in Canvas. So I'm going to search for virtual learning. When I search for, for virtual learning, look at all of the different images that have come up. All of these images are 100% safe for me to use because they come from Unsplash and there's a there's an agreement between Canvas and Unsplash. So maybe maybe I'm going to take this one just because I'm going to click submit. Now, when it comes in, notice it is gigantic, right? So just like on a Word document, what you can do is you can click on it, you can grab the corner, you can just Scale it down. That's the easiest way that I've found to do that. You could go into the HTML, but not everybody knows HTML. So now what I did is I just clicked on the image, just like it acts, just like in a Word document, and I bring it down, and then I decide how I like it. Now, what I like to do is I like to come down and save, because that gives me an idea of what it's going to look like on my page, okay? So that was the first thing I did. I'll go through that again, just so that might be somewhere where you want to start. So we have the edit button. We're in the RCE. I'm going to go to insert. I go to image. And then I'm going to go to upload image because I'm getting it from somewhere outside of my course, right? When I go to upload image, I chose unsplash. And then I search for um, whatever it is I'm looking for. I just chose baseball just for something different, right? So this is something that you can use for any topic. All of these have been set up by the, um, by the artist, I guess, or the photographer to be used without any issue for copyright. So we have an image, I love that. Anybody else have an idea of what we could do 
to improve the look of my home page. I like the image, make it a little smaller just for the purpose of what we're doing. Anyone else? Uh, formatting the text, those yeah. parts that stand out. Yeah. Love it, formatting that text. Let me put, first of all, let me go bold. That's a little helpful, right? Perhaps instead of paragraph, maybe I want to make it a header. Gives it a little bit of a different, different look. Maybe I want to bring that up to 18 or 24. Perhaps I want to put it into the middle. So you can see how, just like in a Word document or a Google document, you're just using what's up there in the RCE to help you out a little bit. So we have quality course design. We have an image. Here's my introduction to the course. I could choose to perhaps put that in bold if I wanted to. Let me take a peek at it, see what it looks like. It's getting a little bit better, right? It's getting, it's getting there. It's getting a little bit better. I can work on this until I'm super happy with it. Once I have the general standard of my title, my introduction, my contact information, and how to, you know, who I am and how to reach me, then I can start to make it cute, right? I can start to make it pretty, but I wanna make sure that I at least have all of this information here so that I can provide, you know, provide for my students um, what they need to know who I am and, and where I'm gonna be. So I could even come in and put instructor or teacher, um, maybe, maybe this is bold, uh, please reach out to me directly if you have any questions. Now, I did put my email address here. Canvas is kind enough if I go right behind that and just click enter, it will turn it into a link for me so that they could go ahead and paste that link into their email or, or whatever it may be. So that's an example of thinking about the standards of making your course inviting, which I realize this is not incredibly inviting, but for the sake of time, we're going to stop there, right? But I could really spend some good time um, making sure that this is something that my students would uh, would want to and feel feel confident about coming in knowing they're in the right spot. Now, let's talk a little bit about course navigation because that was another standard that we have there. So, when you come into your Canvas course, right? You go you go to your dashboard. Let me go to my dashboard real quick just to show you where I am. Here is my uh, course design demo. I could oh, yeah. put uh huh. Can I can I show you one? Can I show them one thing that I really love to do when it comes to home pages? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so if you'll go back to the RCE on the home page, yep. And I think just as especially sometimes if you have a lot of content on your page, sometimes using something like a horizontal break can make it very very easy to break that content up and. Here again, I love to work in HTML, but I'm a nerdy person like that. And not everybody may to be like that. But if you go to insert, and then that very last option is horizontal line, it's gonna drop that line in there. And it just gives you a nice clean break between however you're wanting to segment, maybe a page or the home page, however that may be done. But it doesn't involve any special coding or anything fancy like that because it's a built-in yeah. feature for you. That's a, thank you so much. I, I always forget about that horizontal line, but you're right, that, that's a really great way to do it. And, you know, another thing in speaking of the horizontal line, the way that Canvas is built, this is, this is my name of my course, right? That's always going to be there. And this is, um, I, I put the name here again. So I could decide to, since the name of my course and the name of my page are the same, I could decide, or the name of the page, excuse me, are the same. I could go decide to leave it there, or I could go ahead and come before the title hit enter, come back up and insert that horizontal line that I'm speaking about. And it kind of divides the page name with the information on the page. That is super helpful. Thank you so much for mentioning that. All right, let's talk a little bit about course settings. Now, as the student right now, you have access to a lot of things, right? So I wanna make sure that you have access to only certain things because I want you to not get lost because as it was said earlier, course navigation is key. So what I did is I went into settings, I'll do it again, go into my settings. Settings is always the last link on your course. And then right here, you'll see, I'll make it a little bit bigger. 
just a moment. Right here, you'll see that we have different options, right? Course details is where it always lands, but I wanna go into navigation. So before I even open up my course for my students, I wanna go into navigation. Let me make it smaller for just a moment. Anything here is open for students. Right now, I don't have anything blocked off. So what I want to do is, first thing I want to do is I want to disable assignments. Now, that doesn't mean that kids are never gonna have assignments. That means I'm taking assignments out of the navigation for the course because I want all my students to go through modules. I'm going to disable people, right? Because I don't want them poking around seeing who's in the course. It's none of your business who's in there. It's you and me and we're handling it. So you can see what happens. When I disable something, watch what happens. It moves to the bottom. That's going to show up over here with a little I because students cannot see it. I can go ahead and continue to disable like this or I can drag it and I can bring it down. I like to keep mod for the beginning of my course. Sometimes I keep a syllabus. I'm gonna put files down so they can't see it. I don't want them going through pages. I'm going to keep grades. I'm gonna take discussions out. I'm going to keep announcements. I like to start with this. I like to start with home, announcements, grades, and modules. Everything that's up here is visible to students. Everything down here is visible to me as the teacher, but not to the students. Lastly, after you've done this, you always have to make sure you save. And you're gonna forget to save probably four times before you remember, I have to go save. It's what we do, it happens. You'll remember this when you do it. <laughs> so let me take a look at my course navigation now. Notice all of these little eyes. Notice that I, as the teacher, have access to these still, but my students will not. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on student view and show you what the students see. Look how simple. So the person that talked about course navigation as being so important, notice that my kids can go to home, students can go to the grade book to see what their grades are, and they can go to modules. So when I click on modules, I have the information available to my students, right? Because we talked about putting things in modules. Now, this is all available for my students. They can click on anything. They can see it. Since the course design recommendation is the module, when I click here, I'm not going to read it, but I'm just going to go through it. Notice the information on the page. Corey talked about the horizontal line, right? Notice how information has been chunked to try to make it so that it's um, a little more accessible without being quite so overwhelming. When I click next, it takes me to the next page in the module. So you as the teacher have the ability to kind of guide your students for what you want them to see. As a, as a, as a teacher starting a course, I like to have the least amount of items visible on that long list so I don't overwhelm. I can choose to publish or unpublish. As the student, we're going through, just going next, 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 until we get to the end of the module. Let me leave student view for a second to modules as the teacher. Now, right now within the module, my module is published and everything within my module is published. But let's say that I'm working on with a, you know, with a group of students that are, are brand new, I know that they're going to get overwhelmed very, very quickly. So what I could do is I could decide to only publish a few things. When I go back into student view, notice the amount of information available for my students now is much smaller, right? So you as the teacher, you have the decision, just like face-to-face, you decide when you hand them a certain textbook or when you give them an activity, right? Like the beginning of the week, you don't just give them everything we're gonna do Monday through Friday. Here you go, here's all your stuff and we're gonna get through this, right? You actually dole it out um, day by day. And you as the teacher have that ability within Canvas to decide how much your student sees at what time. But you as the teacher, always have the ability to see everything, right? So we talk about building via modules. I'm gonna go ahead and, is that something that you guys would like to, to um, for me to model? Or do we wanna move on to something different? Thumbs up for modeling, yes? Okay, that's what I needed to know. All right, so I'm the teacher. 
I'm in my, you know, I've come into my course, right? I have my homepage ready. I'm ready to give you the assignment for, let's say, let's say for um, tomorrow. Maybe I want to do it by the day. You know, I have students that have modules by day. I have students or teachers that have modules by day, teachers that have modules by week. Some teachers have modules by content area. If you teach more than one content area within, in one course, it's really what works for you. There's not a wrong way to do it. So what I will do, I'm just going to collapse this module right now. I'm not taking anything away. It just makes it a little easier to see what I'm doing, right? So I'm going to come into modules, click on plus module. I'm going to give my module an A. If it's something that I'm doing this week, let's, um, let's do it by date, right? So January. 21st, add module. That's my folder. It's empty right now. There's nothing in there, but I have a module, a folder that I will have ready for my students. If I click the green publish button, that module will be read, right? So coming back to the rich content editor, let's create, let's create an assignment. So when I, when I click the plus button within that module, right? It's like putting a paper inside of a folder. So I'm going to click the plus button. I have options of different things that I can create. I'm going to do an assignment because I think that's the easiest one to, to get an understanding of how to build. So I'm going to click on assignment. And then I have to click create assignment because you'll see here, if I had any assignments in there, they could be listed. And maybe it's something I did last year and I could go ahead and create it, but this is a new assignment. So I'm going to click create assignment and then I need to give it a name. So, um, vocabulary activity, just because I'm going to add the item. So if you notice, make this a little bit larger for a second. I want you to look at this icon here. This icon, it's a little piece of paper with a pencil. That means that it's something the student is going to return to me. They're going to interact with, okay? And something, a little piece of paper with a pencil means the student's going to write on it, right? So this is something that I'm creating for the students to do. So now that I have it, I click on it and it's empty because I haven't put any information in here, right? So I'm gonna click the edit you will see the RCE comes in, right? I'm going to uh, maybe start with directions. Vocabulary activity. So maybe read the Newzella article and um, find five key words to Five keywords that were new to you, and I'm really making it up. I apologize for that, right? So I have my directions. Now, this is the RCE, okay? So I can choose to make this bold. I could add a picture if I wanted to. I could even add a link. So let me come here, and I'm going to go to newzella.com. For kick, so I'm not signed in, so it's hopefully going to be able to give me just an article. Let's see, probably not. So I have to sign in. Let's imagine that this is the article. Okay, I'm going to come here and I'm going to click the um, I'm going to click the uh, highlight the the URL, Control C or copy, right right click copy. What I'll come in here is I can go ahead and paste the link here, but that's not very pretty, right? So instead of doing that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight news. I'm going to click the link, make sure it's an external link. And what happens is this is the title. Whoops, sorry. That's the title for the external link and then I can just control V or I think it's I think it's Apple V on a on a Mac and I can paste my information here, right? So now what's happened is that's become a link. When I click come down, 
remembering that it's important for you to do date, right? So I'm going to decide how many points this is worth. I think I told them five, right? Five points. I need to choose a submission type because right now it's no submission. I would like for my students to give me an online submission because I want them to return it in Canvas. I'm going to have them do this in a text entry, which means there's going to be a little text box for them to answer. I could give them a couple of choices. I could decide, well, you know what? Maybe somebody will want to have a video, a media recording. Rather than writing this, they're going to want to tell me. So I could give them that choice. Um, I could also, if, if maybe they wanted to put it on a Word document, I could let them have a file upload. So you as the teacher have this ability to choose how they respond to you. So I'll, I'll have those as three options just to show you how that goes. I'm going to make sure that it's assigned to who it needs to be, which would be everyone in this one. And then most importantly, that due date, right? So this is tomorrow's assignment. So I think I'll make it due by Sunday evening. And I will click save and publish. So now we have the link to the article that I want them to read. They have the ability to answer it. I could decide to put a rubric. That's a little more advanced. We're not going to worry about today, but let me go back to this for a moment. And let's take a look at what we see. If I go into my student view, I want to see what the student sees, right? So this is my vocabulary activity. The student comes in on the activity. You see where it says, okay, here's what I need to do. I click on the Newzella article so that I can see what I need. And if you notice, when they click on that link, look what Canvas does for you. Puts it in a new window. So they don't they don't have to go back and forth, right? So the information would be here. And when I'm ready to give my keywords, I'm going to click start assignment. I have the ability to go ahead and upload a file because I did it on a doc or a Word document. I can use my webcam if I want to do like a recording there. Oh, I'm sorry, that's for a picture, forgive me. If I want to record and upload media, go ahead and do that. And this is this is pretty cool because it's super easy for the kids. So they just click record. Now, if they had, let's say the assignment was to create a video and they had the video on their, their laptop or whatever, then they would just upload the media, right? Because they would have that file. Um, I can choose to include my webcam here. You know, you know it's not going to let me do it because I'm sharing my screen. If I weren't sharing my screen, you would see it. I have my mic. You can see I'm talking, right? So what I would do is I would click as the student start recording. It gives me the countdown. And then I would say my five words, right? These are the five words that I learned from reading that article, whatever the assignment was. I would click finish. Now, it gives me the opportunity to listen to that. If I like it, I save it. If not, I click start over. When I click save media, what happens is the audio goes right there. So now if you have a student who maybe doesn't, doesn't want to write it, right? Maybe this, this is how maybe their IEP says they need to verbally be able to give you things. This is something you can use within Canvas. And then you as the teacher can come back and grade it. Once they've done that, they would click submit assignment. If I were doing it as a text entry, as the student, I would just click on text entry, or maybe you only have text entry. I would include my, my words here, right? Oops, include my words here, and I would click submit assignment. If I were doing the file upload, I would upload the file from my computer. So you can see those are your options, right? And you may use file upload for certain things. Um, you know, it's really to your discretion. Whatever it is, my media is still here. Actually, my text entry is going to be there as well. And I'm going to click submit assignment. So I'm in as your practice student right now. You can see, I can see it was submitted. My details are here. I'm good. I move on to my next, um, my next product. Then as the teacher, I come in later, grade it, right? So I come into modules. I click on vocabulary activity. I click on speed grader. And then I come in and I am able to see the text entry. Um, I think because I did two, it overwrote. Yeah, it did. It overwrote the, uh, the audio. So obviously you would want to choose one. As a teacher, I could come in and add a comment. I can also record myself 
providing a comment to the student, right? So I can do this verbally so that they can hear my comment. I click finish, I save media, and then my comment comes here. If I weren't sharing my screen, I could have my camera on as well, right? So I could give the grade, I could assign the grade there and um, click submit, and then the student would be able to come in and see my assignment. So that's another example of the rich content editor. One thing I did want to uh, share with you really is, you know what, let me show you this, because this is always weird as a beginning user in Canvas. As the teacher, I've come in and I've graded it, right? My, uh, my comment is here. When I first started, I would get lost. How do I get back? How do I get back to modules? How do I get back? And I would kind of freak out a little bit. What you can do is you can just simply click. This is like a hot link. If you click here, it will take you back to the assignment and then you can easily go back to modules. A lot of people click out and go back in and it wastes a lot of time. It always becomes a hot link. Um, in regard to, I'm looking at the time and I know we're two minutes over. I'm going to make this super quick, you guys. I could talk to you all night. In regard to the course navigation, I want you to notice that assignments are not visible to students. I mean, excuse me, announcements are not visible to students. The reason is it's because I don't have an announcement yet. So let me show you how to create an announcement and have it on your home page. The first thing you want to do before you do your announcement is you go to settings. On settings, to scroll down to the bottom to our options right here. See this number three? First of all, you're going to click show recent announcements on course home page. Let me make that a little bit bigger for you because I'm sure it's pretty hard to see. So you want to make sure that you click that little button there and then you have a choice. Do you want the, are you, are you someone that's going to use announcements a lot? Maybe you want to have the three announcements on your homepage. I personally don't like a cluttered homepage. I like one. That's just me. Um, again, it's, it's your choice. So once I've said show students, show announcements on my homepage and I click one, then I know one is going to show. And then when I put another announcement, it's gonna be on my home page and that one will go into the announcement sections. Now, for announcements, you can choose to allow students to um, comment or not. That's your choice. You can click or unclick these. I'm gonna go ahead and update course details and I'm gonna to go to my home page. And right now, if you look, I now have recent announcements on my home page but there are none. So let's make one really quick, right? So I'm going to go to announcements. I'm going to click plus announcement. I'm going to give it a title. So maybe it's um, homework for January 21st. Put your information here, right? So uh, this weekend for homework, to and you would put that information in. You can choose to put this in 14 point type, choose to bold what you want. You could even make it a heading if you would like to do that. It's totally up to you. You can put some images in there, right? Making it something that's appealing to the students. You can choose to delay the posting so you could create your announcement and you could have it um, post on Monday if it were something different. You can, here's where you can allow users to comment or not comment. Um, if you put the comment on there, users must post before seeing replies. That's always a good one so they just don't copy each other. When you can allow liking, maybe you don't want comments, but you allow liking. I doubt that anyone would ever like a homework announcement, but you never know. So I put my announcement on my homepage, right? When I go to my homepage, you will see that my announcement is there. Let me show you from student view. So now as the student, they come into your course, they're on the homepage, it's at the very top. They click here and they come in and they see the information that they need to see for that announcement. And here's what I want you to notice now. I want you to notice that announcements is now available for students, right? When I leave student view as the teacher, that little I is no longer there, that little slashed I, because students can now see my announcement. And the great thing is your announcements will stack on one another. You know, I've seen um, I've seen building administrators use announcements in a, in a staff course to give information, like a kind of a Monday memo kind of thing. And then they have that announcement leave. They don't want it to stay on the page. 
Um, I've seen them use it and allow responses for feedback, right, on maybe a, um, a meeting that they had, that kind of thing. So the announcements are, are another part of the course design that are super helpful because as a student, when you come into your Canvas dashboard, if there is an announcement, you're going to have a little little icon here that's showing you there's an announcement, right? So you can see. So if that's something that you choose to use in your course, I recommend that you do. That's something that you can um, you can use as a as a common communication for your for your teachers. And your students will receive if they have the notifications set up. It'll go to the mobile device app if they have that turned on, or it will go to their institutional email. So that be you know whatever email is in Canvas for them. Another thing that you can do that I think is really cool inside of an announcement is directly link to that assignment. So in Lorianne's example, if she's talking about that homework assignment to, to read that uh, News LA article, you could link to it directly in that announcement because, you know, students would never claim they couldn't find the homework. But when you link it directly in the announcement, mm, yep. it's kind of hard to make that claim. Right there, for sure, for sure. And just talking about course design, I'll just show you something that that I'm pretty proud of. This is a, a PD course that I, I use with, with my teachers. This is a micro credential that we have. Um, and the idea is that the teachers get to use, get to earn a digital badge for um, participating in this micro credential. So here's an example of a module right here. Within my module, I have all of these assignments for teachers, right? If you notice, I have some um, prerequisites set up that the teacher, in order to earn their badge, they have to do everything. They have to submit everything and it has to be graded. When I click into it, this is one of the uh, PDs that we offer. I have some information here with, you know, this is how I want you to submit. You're going to see access to that because I'm not signed into that instance. But the example is, you know, chunking it so that. I have it so that the teacher is able to, they don't have to do it in order, but they have to complete all items. And then once they complete that item, then they are able to earn their credential. And you'll notice down here, unpublished, I have my facilitator notes. So if I'm teaching this lesson, it, the notes are there for me. If a colleague of mine is, is maybe subbing for me or teaching it instead of, the notes are there for them, right? So what we do as a team is we're constantly updating our facilitator notes and they're unpublished for students. Students can't see them. They can only see what we choose to publish for them. And you'll see that right here, right? So that's just an example of, of what your course can become as you're working, but I certainly, we certainly didn't do this day one or week one or even um, month one, right? We um, we took time to build these things and made it so that it was it was useful to us. So I think that is, I mean, basically kind of covers it. I, I really do think I could spend hours and hours and hours with you all. I hope that you were at least able to take something away today, right? Um, one thing that you can take away, you can build on, and then you can come back next time and we can take that experience, just like you do with your students. You need your background knowledge, you need your experience, and we'll work on, um, you know, moving forward with that. And eventually, you'll get there. You'll, you'll be like, look how far I've come. And then you'll find someone behind you who is feeling overwhelmed and stressed out, and you'll say, listen, take it day by day, we'll get there. Because that, that's really what I did to get to where I am, and um, I guarantee there, there are many of you out there that are, that are further along than, than others and and you, and you know what it's like to struggle. So I appreciate you being here. I appreciate your time and I apologize for taking you 10 minutes over. Please forgive me. <laughs> but I was just so excited to share with you. I hope that um, hope you found this useful and I certainly hope that I can see you in our next session. Yeah. And thank you guys for hanging out with us. Like, like Lorian said, it is past time. Um, there are a few resources I wanted to share with you all. Um, I'm going to drop them all in the chat here. If you're watching this recording, know that they're in the description below of this uh, YouTube video. But um, there are um, the checklists that we talked about. Um, I've done some links to some templates, home pages that are free out there in the world. By no means am I endorsing any of them, but there's a place to start if you want to just copy something directly into one of your courses from Commons. Those are there. 
uh, the link to the upcoming webinars and the recordings for the ones we've done in the past, and then as well as my email address, so if I can be of any way help to you all out there in the world. Uh, those of you that are hanging out with us in the live session, uh, I'll be working on uh, your email for your CEU certificate tomorrow. So be looking out for that email from me. Um, and like I said, if there's anything else we can do, uh, that's what we're here for. And so hopefully this was an awesome session for you guys. Thank you all. And I will definitely follow up with the Nearpod.